Yes, you read well. Uh, our target is to resettle to Catalonia 4,500 uh, refugees. It's not a limit, it's just uh, a goal in the way. But uh, we think that the crisis we are living now in Europe is something we can solve and it's not so difficult to solve. Uh, we have received a million and a half people in just 10 years. We were a country of 6.3 uh, million inhabitants and uh, now we are a country of uh, seven and a half. And to receive 4,000, 5,000, 10,000 migrants from a demographic point of view is not a difficult thing. We think, uh, and instead, uh, we have a municipal registration of population so we can know more or less how the population is moving every year. So uh, in Catalonia every year is coming uh, around 100,000 people and is living around 100,000 people. So if you receive 105 or 110, it's not really an impact of our health system or our education system. And maybe it's something you have to manage and it's not so difficult. And, and, and that can be a bit difficult. Um, first thing I, I want to share is that uh, we have been uh, living a, a, a huge demographic uh, transformation in our country since uh, 2000 and 2015. We, we move from 6.3 to 7.5 million inhabitants. It means an increase of more than 20% of population. Um, this change is not the first time it happens in Catalonia. Uh, during the 20s and the 60s, in the past century, uh, all, also we have a, a movement of population like this. So we can say we are a, a country of, of migrants or of immigration. And now we have 180 nationalities in our country. And we know or we have heard that there are spoken more than 300 languages in our country. So. We have a, a, a wide spread of diversity. This um, uh, transformation affects uh, any aspect of life. Uh, for instance, uh, one out of three children born in Catalonia this year will have at least one of his parents from abroad. And between 20 and 25% of spouses every year in Catalan marriages are also foreigners. So it changed everything. It's not easy, it's not everything easy. We have problems, of course. Uh, the scale and speed of these changes have put social cohesion under considerable pressure. Unemployment rate among migrants are twice or three times higher than among nationals. So this is one of, of the, the, the big issues. And, um, and when compulsory education finish at the age of 16, one out of three nationals youngsters uh, doesn't one out of 10, sorry, national youngsters doesn't graduate. But if we look at, at boys and girls uh, with Latin American, African, or Asian nationality, this rate is three times higher. But uh, we, we have lived all these ch changes. We have all these problems I mentioned, and others I cannot mention because of the time, of course. But at the same time, we have to say that um, yet in Catalonia there has been no serious social conflict in connection with migration. Opinion polls on integration are generally positive. Support of for xenophobic political options is negligible, is negligible unlike uh, other parts of Europe, sadly. And at the present, the vast bulk of public opinion supports taking in refugees from the Middle East conflict. The generally accepted theory in European, in European politics that more immigration leads to more xenophobia is categorically refuted in Catalonia. And the question is, is that because it is always a false statement or it's because immigration in Catalonia is still very recent memory or perhaps because some of the approaches in the policies put in place in, by the Catalan society have helped even if only a little. Um, in our view, the conflicts uh, seen in other countries have not yet been experienced in Catalonia, in part because most of the migrants, pop migrant population belongs to the generation that immigrated. There is still time to influ influence the next generation. Despite the generally good level of coexistence, diversity is too often equated, equated with inequality. It is not always sufficiently valued, and for many Catalans, it is still not seen as a defining and enrichment element of our society. Um, however, 
it is also worth mentioning some of the components of our policy which might be useful when thinking about a new model for Europe. And we want to propose five ideas. And, and, uh, and the first of one is the goal is of our policies we're talking about this morning here. The goal is citizenship. The second is recognition of rights from the very beginning for all. Third is normal access to the public services. Fourth is political consensus. And fifth is a collective identity proposal based on shared values and respect of diversity. Um, in almost all migration processes around the world, there is a paradox. While the majority of migrants say that their migration is temporary, the reality is that most have remained in the host country. If the objective is citizenship, you stress right from the outset equal rights and duties and foster engagement with and participation in the host society. It means that you have to recognize rights from the very beginning. And for example, we recognize an exercise of the basic rights for all people, regardless whether they are documented or undocumented. Uh, we, um, we have to say that we don't defend the presence of people with irregular status in the country. But if there are any, it has always, we have always advocated they should have basic rights, including social services, public health care and compulsory education. Another principle we used in our policies is, is the idea of normal access to public services. I will give you an example in the, in the education, ish, in the education uh, field. No? In every school that receives a certain number of migrants, we have the welcome classroom, which is inside the normal schools. It's a classroom where children focus on, the, on being accompanied in, in its first steps, uh, talk about its migration process, but most of all, learning of language. From the very beginning, these children share parts of their time with the rest of pupils. And as soon as possible, they get in the normal classroom group. Uh, for example, it usually takes around 200 hours for a Latin language speaker pupil and um, around 350 for the rest of pupils with non-Latin language uh, knowledge. No? But uh, we defend that the general services should be the same for all the citizens and any uh, public policy that you address solely uh, immigrants is only temporary. Fourth point we think is important in, in integration policies is to reach a political and social consensus. Uh, we know that it's difficult sometimes, but immigration and citizenship policies deal with far-reaching change and hence call for a long-term approach. Thinking ahead needs to prevail over the self-interested exploitation of fears. And this consensus has been a constant in our politics and it, it's been expressed also in 2008 when the Catalan government and the opposition parties, trade unions and employees association, all the tiers of government and civic organization signed the national agreement on immigration. And a fifth idea we want to share is uh, a proposal of common identity uh, based on both ideas, diversity and common public culture, based on some things we have to share, all we have to share, and some things that we can be diverse and should be, an, that should be an advantage, not always a problem. When we talk about common public culture, the things we have to share, we're talking about human rights, democratic values, equality between men and women, freedom of sexual orientation, religions, beliefs and practice, and any democratically established agreement. Uh, this way, um, based on the respect for... Um, uh, one of the results of our integration policies that we, we are proud to show is that our language, Catalan, is a language talked by people who uh, has learned this language. It doesn't mean that in all your countries we have academics learning Catalan. That's not the idea, as you see in the first of the list, uh, the English. No, the English is the, the, the main language talked by people who, who wasn't, wasn't his first language. No, but in proportion, 
Catalan has a 40, 46% of speakers who wasn't their first language. What does it mean? That means that we are a country that has received many people and these people get integrated without leaving or without giving up to be what, he, what they were. I want to share some uh, practical ideas uh, about uh, the two issues you are inviting me to, to talk and I know that since then, I've, I've, talking, I've been talking about things very generally. But uh, about education, for example, is something that is probably the, the main concern about the integration process. About education, to get better results, you have to change very structural things. Uh, you have to, to improve budgets. To, you have to change how teachers are, are, are taught. And things like are very important, but you will get results after 20 years. So. When we have the problem we had, that the, the failure in, among migrants is so high, we need some measures, very simply, if it's possible, cheap, but with very quick results. And we, what we propose are three ideas which are very easy. First, a school tutoring with classes given by high school students. We have now hundreds of university students who spend two hours a week uh, giving uh, some support of um, a school tutoring after the, after the timetable no? uh, in the afternoon. We, are, we want now to move to thousands of students because we've seen that it has very quick results. It's not an expensive policy. You have to mix what you, what you ask to volunteer and what you can pay a, a, a bit to support that students. But the results are uh, very important. Second issue, we think it's uh, not so easy, but uh, very important, is launch programs that help families take part and contribute to their children's education by showing them how education system works so that they can succeed at school. Every family wants to help their children, but not every children has a family that has the same ability or the same skill to help their children. So one thing that you, you, we need to do is to put families inside the school and to use, as, as, uh, use your creativity. You can uh, imagine many different programs to do that. We have, for example, children mentoring parents. It's, a, it's, a, it's an, an amazing experience to see uh, Pakistani girls teaching their, their, their mothers inside the school, of course. Or, for example, we have many migrants from Africa. We, we, we need to do work in literacy. In Europe, there is people that has to learn to write and to read. And uh, if you do that, especially focused on the population who has children in the schools, and you do that inside the schools, the results of the children improve um, in, in, a very, in a very important way. And the third idea I want to share about the schools, which is not difficult to do, and we are not doing very well, I have to recognize. We are just starting. I'm very sorry. I don't, I don't, oh. I don't want to interrupt you, but we really have to share okay. the time remaining between all the, the speakers. Last idea. So yes, the that. last idea is to teach the language of migrants in schools. Uh, now we are, we are facilitating to that happens inside the school, so we're facilitating the, the structure, but the, the, the teachers are volunteers. And we have more than 100 schools teaching Arab, Arabic, we have more than 20 schools teaching um, Romanian, more than 20 teaching Chinese, and this makes a very good relationship because the education institutions and the migrant population help. Uh, thank you, and, and sorry for the no hot delay.